But I had a request to check out this video of Call Me Chris teaching her dog viral tricks. Now, I have no clue who this woman is. I never heard of her before, but I went to look up this video and turns out she's super popular. So let's take a look, see what she's up to. I figured I would show you what he can do before we figure out what he can't do. Kevin, sit. Down. Good That's pretty good. Good. She's actually really fast there about rewarding. That's really key. Whenever a dog does a behavior, you have to reward them within essentially one second of the behavior in order for it to click in the dog's mind that, hey, whatever I just did was good. Shake, Shake. Good. You. What a handsome man. Okay, come here. Good boy. Sit. Good. Oh, yeah. oh wow. There you go. Oh, He's got quite a, quite a few tricks down so far. That was my fault. Heel. Hey, wow. Heel. They'll stay on my heel as long as I have them in heel, and then when I'm done, I'll say, okay, cool. Very good. Usually that means he can go. You'll notice that Kevin's not wearing a shock collar, no choke change. He's doing this completely off leash. I'm, I'm impressed so far. This is quite good. In order to teach your dog to speak, you want to have something that they really want, and you want to just kind of entice them with it until they vocalize. That's definitely one way to go about teaching a dog to speak or bark on command is kind of teasing them essentially. And what happens is the dog just gets frustrated and starts barking out of frustration. So that does work. But my method that I prefer to use is sound. You find something that triggers the dog to bark. It'd be like a doorbell or a sound on the computer computer, whatever it is, you play that and you do the same thing. I have the treats and I'm going to teach treats you are gonna be how enough. to speak. I think it's going to be real simple. I think we'll get this right away. Speak. How about one of those treats first? Okay. Can you speak? Can you speak? What she just did there jokingly actually can work. Imitating a dog's bark and trying to get the dog to bark. You bark, the dog barks. You bark, the dog barks. Yeah, I speak. Look it, look it, look it. <laughs> nom, 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 nom. Speak. No, no. You gotta hide those treats. Uh, uh, Problem is she's got too many treats there, so the dog's too distracted. If we're gonna go this method, we've gotta make it just so it's one treat and the dog's focus is solely on that. Okay. That's okay. Let's try this okay, again. Good. That's Speak. good to feed him so he knows. Speak. Okay, that's good. I want that. Speak. There you go. Good. Yes, good, good. boy. Very good. Yes, good. Good boy. I gotta be a speech. little faster there to reward. Yes, there, good, good, good. Much better. Good, good, good. Oh my god. Really good there. I think her actually barking is really the thing that was triggering the dog to bark though, more than the food lure. You love me? I love you. Teaching the, Aww, how to use you. the buttons I, next. Okay. I love you. I got the uh, dog speech training buzzers. buzzers. I have yeah. little to no hope for these because Kevin doesn't like loud sounds. With those buttons or buzzers, keep in mind that dog's range of color is not great. They can't see shades of red and green and they predominantly see in shades of blue and yellow. So even though those buttons are all different colored, it's actually quite hard for dogs to differentiate which ones are which. I'm gonna start with yes. Yes. Easy. So we'll see how she goes about teaching this. The first thing you want to do though, is teach the dog to target so that when they put their paw on something, they get a treat. And then you start targeting the actual button. Come All right, here. got the button on the floor. Come Good. Come here, boy, and sit, sit. Good boy. Would you like a treat? <gasps> yes. That's another way to do it as well, kind of using a mimic sort of system where you hit the thing, hit the button, give the dog a treat, hit the button, give the dog a treat. And then eventually the dog hopefully paws out of himself to get the treat. Okay, your turn. Would you like a treat? You can lift this foot up too, give him a little extra help. <gasps> Whenever I'm teaching a dog to do something, I always prefer not to ever physically touch them and let the dog actually be the one making the choice. But when you do something like this, yeah, it's not awful to pick the foot up. It just does speed up the process a little bit. So this is okay. Yeah. Oh, you're so close. Yeah. You're so close. Yeah. Oh, the way you be do it. I think it's easier if you have them sit. It's harder for a dog to lift their leg from a down. Ready? To aim. <laughs> Let's Here, see. Press. Come on, Kevin. There you go. Good. Yeah, we Very did. good. How to teach your dog middle hide. Grab the treats. Treatos. Train your dog to follow lure. Good. Bring them around. And through. Good. That's how I would do it, too. Very good. 
Remove treats and incorporate voice. Yeah, that last part is the most important. Remove the treats. There's a big misconception with training with treats that you're supposed to use them forever. And that's not true. When you're doing a lure, you should really be phasing out the treats basically within 12 repetitions or so. I always thought this one looked uh, pretty cool. And Kevin knows how to heal. It's a little Kevin bit harder he... with the big dog. Hopefully he's going to fit under her. He's pretty tall compared to her legs. Uh, Kevin, he's over it. <laughs> Kevin's had enough training for one day. Remember, whenever you're training your dog, keep the training sessions short. I would never work with a dog and trying to train them something for more than five minutes at a time. Because after five minutes, it just becomes too much, too much mental stimulation. They get bored, it stops being fun. And when it stops being fun, the rate at which they learn starts to go down. We're gonna do a trick, okay? We're gonna go middle, middle. Ready? Let's see. Get the treats, so middle. Put your, put your hand down middle. lower. Sit. Oh. Yes, oh, the little, little camera cut middle. there. Middle. There we go. Good. Good boy. <laughs> I don't know if he fits when he stands, does he? He's ah, always got to sit. That's his no word. Is ah, ah. Gentle. Good boy. Okay. okay. Yeah, he's like big. It's going to take a little bit longer. My dog's special trick is that even though he doesn't have thumbs, he somehow knows how to open up doors. It's gonna be a fun trick, but you also gotta be careful because once you teach your dog to open doors, that means they can open them on times when maybe you don't want them to open them. But always be careful before you teach them this. Okay, ready? Okay, Kevin, don't get it. You've got the right door at least with that kind of handle. Well, it's a lot easier to do that than a round handle. What I would do here is actually the same thing I would have done for teaching the buzzers, is I would have taught the dog to target something. You teach them to target a stick or target whatever you want, a wooden spoon. And every time they touch it with their paw, they get a treat. You could then put the spoon on top of the buzzer, they go to touch, treat. Then you could use the spoon here too. Put the spoon on top of the door, they go to touch, treat. But let's see if he gets it this way. I am your servant. That's, that's good that you can move it from the outside. It kind of helps to encourage them to see it. You gotta remember, think about it through the dog's vision, right? They don't just naturally understand the concept of that thing makes the door open. Yeah, that would be good. Keep opening and close, open and close, open and close. Oh, it's kind of frustrated. Come on, lady. Let me out. I want to go play. I've had enough of this. So working all day. Now you lock me inside. Where'd she go? Oh. <laughs> Come on, Kevin. Always be careful if you're going to do this if you have glass doors and you have big dog. Because if the big dog goes to jump, remember, their aim is not going to be great. They're going for the doorknob. Potentially, they could go out the glass. And the last thing we want is our dog's leg or body going through a glass door. Yeah, he's using his nose. Got to go the other way. Other way, Kevin. Oh, maybe it worked that way too. Okay. You got it. Good job. I'll take it. So Your should be a pretty easy to one. Just to lie lure them. You want to focus on luring them just like this on their Good. side. I'm going to teach you how to play dead. Okay? I'm excited. So, I think. Have see this? Lay so down what first. We're going to do. We're going to say, right? Down. Good. Down. And then flip over. When you're luring for play dead, really important in the position of your hand. You don't want your hand out far because then the dog's going to be moving too far away. You want the treat nice and close, right in front of the dog's nose, and you slowly kind of push it into their chest. So they kind of get this sort of motion, and then you can pull them to the side. And then flip over. Okay. So flip get that over. treat nice and close, right under his nose. No. <laughs> okay. Push and in, push in. Pull over. No. No, down. And Lower your hand. Over. And under his nose, over. under his nose. And over. over. Yeah, she's, she's, no. she's, she's a little too far out. Mom does it? Okay, okay, look get that hand mom. close. Look okay, she's demonstrating. Okay. Ooh. It worked with the bark. Maybe it'll work for the rollover too. We're going to get this. Oh, Give him a little boy. push. Okay. Maybe I should push him over. Good boy. I think the push is a little cheating, but we'll take it. It's all right. Bang. Good boy. Good. Bang. Let's <laughs> push Bang. him over. Yeah. All right, well, we'll I'll take it. It can't be done with just luring, but got it. that's acceptable. Go, 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 go. Yeah, good boy. Uh, okay, well, one more time. Bang. Come on, Kevin. She's down. <laughs> Kevin says, I don't care about you. Come on, Kevin. Give us one. <laughs> One other thing when you're teaching your dog to roll over, keep in mind the surface. It's a little bit easier if you do this on carpet or grass, somewhere where there's a little bit more traction, as opposed to a hardwood floor or something that's slippery. This one's just out of my pure curiosity. I just want to see if I fake die, if he'll call out for help or do something. Let's see I'm going to try it. I think if she fake dies, he runs over, licks, and then walks away. 
Maybe not even. <laughs> I've never seen any of her content before. Maybe this is normal behavior for her, so the tongue's used to it. I don't know. And now we wait. And now we wait. Kevin, dance break. Oh, yeah. I'm stuck. I gotta go all the way down. Kevin, out. Oh, Kevin. Hey, how you doing? You want to light some chips on fire? No, don't jump on me. Kevin. <laughs> Kevin. Oh, my God. I'd so die. Kevin. <laughs> Kevin's tapping out. He said, I've had enough. I've been working all day. <laughs> He's going to his bed. He knows I faked it. I do that with him all the time. He's like, this girl's oh. full of There you go, then. <laughs> <I'm just sitting laughs> smug and that was fun to watch. And she actually did really, really, really good there. It's so nice and so refreshing to see somebody training their dog and doing it in a way that's not causing harm to the dog. No choke chains, no shock collars, no fear. The dog obviously loves this woman. She loves the dog. And you can see the bond between them. And it's just an amazing thing to see. Thanks for watching, guys. That's all for today. Be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell. So when new videos are up, you get notifications. And if you ever need a little extra help training your dog from me, check out my website, brightdog.com. See you next time.